wait no longer. Greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I am your host, Joseph, and it is here on this PlayStation podcast where we talk about the latest and greatest in all things PlayStation. And alongside me, the greatest co-host who ever is and whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson. How are you, sir? I'm doing okay. Yeah. How are you doing, Joe? I've, I've seen, Actually, no. I'm not going to be a sourpuss. I'm having yeah, don't a, be a sourpuss. I'm having a great day. Good. Yes. Because you know what? Grand scheme of things, last week did not go according to plan here at the mm-hmm. Trophy Room. Um, but we did do our State of Play episode. Thanks. Uh, huge shout out to Luke Lore. And that week was insane because it was my finals week of mm-hmm. my final semester. I am now officially a college graduate. Everybody, round of applause. Tell my dad I told Joe. you so. Suck it, dad. So, yeah, here I am. Now officially unemployed, looking for work. <laughs> Welcome to the group. <laughs> so we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash badbit. I'm hungry now. Uh, Kyle. Yeah. It's been what, like two weeks since we podcasted? Uh, Yeah, since uh, I, I didn't get to do State of Play, and obviously things kind of did not Line go our way. Awards. Yeah. So my awards, question so. for you, sir. Uh, yeah. We both watched the Game Awards. Instead sure of did. instead of talking about the new DualShock back button and what that means for the future of the controller, before we talk about Godfall, before we talk about Wolves Among Us two coming back, before we talk about yep. the new PlayStation Now lineup and Ghost of Tsushima, Kyle, we usually talk about what we've been playing, but tonight. It's all about what we saw at the Game Awards. So Mm -hmm. since we didn't have a cool-ass stream with, like, flares and stuff and whatever, um, what was your takeaway from the Game Awards? So uh, as a a award show, first and foremost, um, was not a huge fan of it uh, compared to what last year was. Yeah. Uh, And for one reason, one reason only, I felt like when it came to the awards itself... A lot of the big stuff was just kind of on the side, and the ones that did get time mm-hmm. were uh, for big, uh, big developers. Like the Fortnite guy got like a, a huge chunk of time. Oh, Donald Mustard, I think is his name. Yeah, Donald Mustard got yeah. got a huge chunk of time on stage, and I understand that you know Mads was probably not there in attendance to get up on stage to do a speech. Yeah, but like it would have been cool to have a little video or something. Like, I, the, having the best performance category being handed out at just, like, second fiddle, that sucked. It was really weird. Like, yeah. It so, was, one thing one weird. thing that you know, Joe, I don't think mm-hmm. anyone, I mean, probably if you listen to us long enough, um, I love watching Critical Role. Mm-hmm. And one of the members of Critical Role is Laura Bailey. And she was there because she was nominated for Best Performance. She ended up leaving the show. And actually went to the Critical Role stream that was happening during the same time really? before her category category came up. So like e- even if she won, she wouldn't have been there to to why did she get leave on that? stage? I-, I think she just made a call. I think she read the room. Um, uh. She didn't really give a reason why, but I don't know. I just thought I just felt like it was very more geared towards. Let's have some huge announcements. This, the well, the more like let's make sponsors happy. Let's get more eyes on us. Like. Mm-hmm. And Let's talk about the huge worked. elephant in the room. Yeah, ending with Fast and Furious you mean and Vin Diesel and Michelle. Of the decade. You mean the last game of the last <laughs> generation? That one. That game looks awful. I'm sorry. Oh my god, game of the year written all over it. I mean, I, but like, I, yeah. Hmm. Speaking of numbers, though, I I just pulled this up from uh, Newsweek by Bob uh, Fecky. I'm sorry mm-hmm. if I pronounced your name wrong, but uh, it says this. The Game Awards took place last Thursday, and the numbers are in. This was the most viewed event in Game Awards history, more than doubling last year's viewership. There was a 26.2 million live streams for the Game Awards in 2018 globally. This is a 180% increase from last year's uh, 11.5 million streams. Mm-hmm. The Game Award stream on Twitch was the uh, was one of the company's highest traffic streams, with over 1.13 million concurrent viewers at its peak. That's huge, and across yeah, that's all awesome. platforms, estimated four million. So he did. I mean, he 
he rolled out that red carpet. People showed. Oh, eyes were there. Absolutely. And, and as far as like a uh, a show, like a, a produced show, mm-hmm. Jeff kills it every year. Right. I, I think as an award show, it works fine. It's just I think the priority was a little off. I wanted a better mix. I Do wanted you... more people to get on stage to kind of like like let's like get their tax. awards and stuff. Brass tax, yeah. though, Kyle. Do you just think it was a bad like the <sighs> The awards were bad because the games, it wasn't like a God oh, War or Red based Dead. Based on, like, on the quality games, yeah. you mean? Because like, a lot of people this whole year have been beating around the bush. Like, are was this year a bad year for video games? And, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I don't want to get negative about it either, but, like, I, I don't know. I Like, are we going to see that spike in viewership next year because of, oh. like... Yeah, yeah, you think so? Oh, absolutely. Next year, we have new consoles. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure oh, there's yeah, going to be right. brand new game reveals. Yeah, it's going to be bigger and better next year for sure. Um, but yeah, like, I, as, a, as an award show, though, do you think it was because of the what was up for the awards that kind of everybody felt a little bummed about it? Uh, it, that could be. Yeah, it, it very well could be. I also think Jeff probably he probably knew that. Um, he'd probably have more viewers just there to see what the big announcements were. Mm. And so like he wanted to get through all the award stuff Chevy quickly Price. because like leading up to it, we were all thinking, what are, what's coming out? Like I thought Batman, Yeah. I thought Harry Potter could have been there. I, I, I thought maybe we would have seen uh, some of the next gen stuff, which we did, which was incredible. Solid. Yeah. Um, but I just thought there were some megatons. Like, many people thought that maybe Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 would have been there. So, so like, maybe it's people's expectations were yes. unchecked. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, because we saw Nintendo tweet about this. I think even PlayStation and Xbox were like, we're going there. I mean, we saw Shuhei and Phil Spencer uh, hug yeah. each other. And you're mm-hmm. like, if you, do, if you don't need any more proof, because I've been seeing it as the new consoles have been getting teased. We're seeing the console wars and the fanboys fight over like oh what absolutely. what IP is better and bullshit like that. If you ever need to know how stupid that argument is, just look up the picture that Shuhei tweeted of yeah. him and Phil Spencer mm-hmm. literally hugging one out. But like, I think I think it was expectations were unchecked, and yeah. I think it is on part of the companies that were tweeting this out saying we're going to be there that maybe they didn't they didn't stress of in what capacity that they would be. At mm-hmm. the awards, because a lot of people like Nintendo, like if Nintendo's tweeting something out and promoting that they're going to be there at this event. And last year they brought out so many surprises for Smash Brothers. You yeah. kind of just think they're going to, you know, get out that, that next Smash character. And mm-hmm. I mean, Xbox brought the heat and, and, and so did PlayStation a little bit. But I understand where it was. I think expectations were a little bit uh, all over the place for yeah, me. And- I, and uh, yeah, just re- real quick, another okay. thing, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that I thought would have helped the show was to kind of link last year to this year. And what I mean by that is Corey uh, Barlog was there, Yeah. right? Wouldn't it have been awesome if he was the one presenting Game of the Year for that this year? That would be year? so cool. A nice little passing of the torch or Christopher Judge yeah. uh, being there to pass it off to whoever won the the next one. Like, I, w- I want... It's probably not a huge thing, but I want some continuity. I want yeah. kind of what the Oscars do, yeah. where like the previous winners come and they are the representatives of the category for the next year. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a cool way to tie everything together. Yeah, I'm see. For me, I think the I think the show sucked. I'm just gonna be real. I don't yeah, think it was. It good. wasn't. Yeah. I don't think it was well paced. We got a commercial every five minutes, mm-hmm. and it was first just the thirty same minutes one. though. Stellar first thirty Stellar. minutes. We were on fire. We'll talk about yeah. it in a second. But like, like. We just got Magic the Gathering, D and D, Google Stadia, <laughs> and like that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. back to back to back commercials, the same ones. And I was just like, okay, so we're, what we're going to see is an announcement. Uh, we're going to see a an award, and then it's a commercial. And mm-hmm. it was just that over and over again, where it just felt like the show was about like technically three hours long because it, started- it was long. It, the pre-show started at eight thirty and it ended at eleven thirty, and it was mm-hmm. just like it was just a lot of nonsense. Yeah, and yeah, some some people got on stage, but most of the time, like there wasn't like you know when the guy uh, when when the founder of that dragon cancer got on stage, we had none of those like hard hitting. This is why yeah. you tune in the, the real meaning of Christmas. I mean, the the, I think the best on stage moment um, besides the music, the music music is incredible every yeah. year. 
um, was Reggie's speech. Reggie's speech yeah. was amazing. Yeah. And that was the highlight of having somebody on stage being a, uh, you know, giving a speech. Yeah. To me, to me, uh, I, the awards part was, was lacking hard, but I did like the diversity in yeah. games that were winning. It wasn't just Absolutely. like Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption, then all of a sudden God of War at the end. So, yeah, to me, I just think, yeah, the contenders this year were varied. There was just no hard definitive answer. And then when it, when it was Sekiro at the end. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Uh, Game of the shocked. Year, Sekiro. I was kind of shocked. Um, yeah. Didn't play Sekiro. Uh, out of us two, you're the one that played it more. Or at all, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, I just didn't hear anybody saying that Sekiro might take it. I knew there was going to be a Dark Horse candidate that was going to yeah. win it, and we didn't expect it. I, I really I was championing control. Same. Um and listen, it's it's it may or may not be the game of the year for us. You're mm-hmm. gonna have to tune in on the first of January or second of January to find that out at the Trophy Room Awards. But I wanted them to win because, you know, that game needs eyes. Uh that studio needs more eyes on them. They do amazing work. But like I, I knew Death Stranding wasn't going to win. Mm-hmm. I absolutely knew that. It's just such a divisive game that it was either control or a dark horse that we would see out of nowhere. And when I saw it was Sekiro, I was I was just like, okay, makes sense. That game was extremely solid. It's the only game yeah. that came out that wasn't buggy or broken at release. It's it, level design. I, I is could also great. yeah, I, Combat, I could great. also see it as a as a thank you for excellence award for from software. Yeah. Like, they've I, made so many high-quality games, Bloodborne, the Souls games. Like, exactly. hey, here's another fantastic game that you made. Yeah. Like, oh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your career work kind of, like, achievement yeah, thing. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, they're always they're always up for that award, and they're, always, they're like the Leonardo DiCaprio. So to see yes. them get that award, I was happy with. Should have been Bloodborne, but I was happy with. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so I was just like, okay, makes sense. And I got on with my life. Not Twitter, though. That was a whole other shit show. Uh, With that said, though, even before we get into all the talk, because we are going to talk about Ghost of Tsushima, the trailer that we saw. Yeah. um, The next Xbox was revealed here, dude. Oh, uh, What a smart move. First off, we're PlayStation show, right? Genius, yeah. But what a smart tactic by Microsoft to say, hey, listen, let's shadow drop this at an event where everybody isn't going to expect it, where everybody yep. who plays everything is here, the hardcore mm-hmm. gamers are here, and let's just shout or drop this thing. And, yeah, like, sure, it's just another CG trailer of things to come, but, like, yeah. they got everybody high. It's still dope. Yeah. It was. I was sitting there, I was like, okay, what could this game be? Because yeah. that's why I was just like, okay, this is Game Awards, this could be huge. And honest to God, the when the camera went into the water yeah i was like oh shit this is the bioshock game that was just oh, talked about yeah so like, oh my god they're gonna show like the next gen bioshock um and then the race car from <laughs> popped in the world it's like wait no this isn't and then obviously it keeps going to go you see master chief i'm like oh shit they're about to drop the well you box. see I, we were I, I was i was hanging out with uh with sean capri in a in a call and yeah. he's too busy talking but once i saw forza i'm sorry I'm sorry, Sean. It was you were too. You're yap yap yap. All right, <laughs> too many people in the room. Jeez, think of others. Um, but once I saw the Forza car, I was like, "Wait, is this the next Forza?" Way, and that's when it like it started hitting me, and I was just like, "Oh, we're gonna see the next Xbox here. This is yeah. a smart move." And then to just take it a step further, and then bring out Hellblade too. Whoo! And like, what she, a trailer, dude! She's about to get down with the sickness, right? She's oh, like, man. Ooh, wah, wah, wah. and like, she, her eyes like going weird. Dope. It oh, was I, awesome. I was blown away by that trailer. I tweeted yeah. about it afterwards. I was like, seeing how well her face is emoting, yeah. and how well that is animated. I was like, is this what we're gonna get? It's just high fidelity character it's not models. Close. And, Absolutely. Oh. It, it, it was it's such a beautiful trailer. Yeah, it to was me, so good. to me, it, it got me just excited about next gen in general. Yeah, um, and for Xbox, give it up to them. You know, yeah, whether they can Absolutely. figure out how to make a name or Twitter knows how to overreact, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, it just got me excited for just next gen. You know, yeah. like what is the PlayStation Five going to look like? 
that's what got me excited about everything. So those are our thoughts on the Game Awards. Again, congratulations, Jeff, on a very successful show. And yes. no doubt is he going to go back to the to the you know to the workshop and work something out and to see Absolutely. how he can fix whatever was was wrong with this year. I believe so he like already that. sent out an email or he tweeted a a thing like answer this survey to kind of help us build a better game awards type That's thing. That's awesome. Because there was Always a part of the feedback. show where even he was like even he was bored. He like there was a very unpolished production. I'm just gonna say it, okay? Look at, look at this production here. I get, I get, I don't get to talk, but like, he, like, there's one part where the camera pans to him by accident, and he's just mm-hmm. on his phone on Twitter. I'm like, what a Trump <laughs> thing to do, dude. Jesus. At least take us out to dinner first or furniture shopping. <laughs> Kyle, you know what though? Game awards were fun. They were fine. Yeah. And whatever your game of the war, you know, year award goes to, whatever that game is more power to you again you're gonna find out who's the real winner who the real game of the year is at the trophy room awards january 2nd be there be square you have an extra week and a half to get your votes in so go ahead do it sekiro is up there too it's sekiro outer world worlds death stranding control um and resident resident evil so go ahead go vote in the description you know what to do with that kyle Let's yeah. get into the news this week, say. The first scooper uh, for this week's show is from Brianna Reeves over at PS Lifestyle. I'm my best friend. Uh, I'll let you have it this week. Okay. Sony unveils DualShock 4 back button attachment due out next month. Looking to improve your competitive play and save money while doing so? Sony will release a new DualShock 4 accessory that may work wonders. A back button attachment for the DualShock 4 is slated to launch early next year on January 23rd, 2020 in the U- United States and Canada for the price of $29.99 US dollars or $39.99 Canadian funny money. Responsive back buttons and high fidelity OLED screen. Uh, this, these are the features of this uh, back yeah, button. Sure, I should have wrote that down. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, the two back buttons can map up to 16 different actions such as triangle, circle, R1 and R2 to name a few and provide amazing tactile feedback so you can jump and slide without missing a beat. The attachment also features an integrated OLED display that provides real-time information around button assignments. Highly configurable. A dedicated button allows you to remap back button inputs on the fly so you are always prepared no matter what game you're playing. Furthermore, you can save and choose up to three different profiles for use in various games and there's also a headset pass-through for connecting any 3.5 millimeter wired headset to the controller. Mm. And it's also developed by PlayStation. Mm. The product is tested and approved for all of your favorite PS4 and PlayStation VR titles and is built with the ergonomics of the DS4 in mind. Wow. What a, what a little cute little shadow drop. Again, why wasn't this at the state of play? I feel like they miss I feel like something gets announced a week after state of play. Right, like last mm-hmm. year, or last year, uh, you know, last September, we were wondering why um, why Pixel Opus wasn't there, right? Like why Concrete Genie wasn't there, um, and now this week, it's just like, yeah, why not? Why not have this at the state of play? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Unless they want to really just focus on the games, but like you said, Concrete Genie wasn't there for that other one. Yeah, it's very it's very weird it's how they have these little announcements after State of Play. Just put it in the State of Play. This is yeah. to me, Kyle. What are you, I mean? My thoughts. This is cool. What are your thoughts on this back attachment? Uh, first thoughts when I saw it, I was like, this doesn't look cool to me. Really? Just for just first thoughts, I'm. I am not a pro gamer. I don't feel the need for these extra back um, buttons. Mm. Uh, the only other thing that I thought would be cool was to map those back triggers as like R3 and L3 for toggles That's instead awesome. of like doing the DualShock things. Yeah. But it's not something like I'm going to run out to go to go grab. Um, yeah. But it's super cool that PlayStation is giving a cheaper option for gamers that want this instead of going to buy the scuff controller or exactly. the um the Astra one. Yeah. To me like, you know, we I just did a review of the uh Elite Series 2 controller on Bad Big Games and that's $180. And like yeah. one of my the in, the intro of that video is this controller costs about 3 Xbox controllers. Mm-hmm. And so to me this product is cool because look, a lot of people, I don't know if you know this, 
probably already have a PlayStation controller for the yeah. PlayStation. So all you have to do is go out to the store and pay 30 bucks instead of 180 you know? Or, yeah, Scruff is like 200 bucks, Easy. Mm-hmm. 150 yeah. I think, for the basic version. So, like, these controllers are insanely expensive, so why not just have a simple attachment that just goes on the bottom of it? I think mm-hmm. it's it's an incredibly smart idea for Sony to kind of go out there and test and see if there's actually a want for, mm-hmm. you know, back buttons on a controller. Absolutely. I yeah. think that's a really smart idea to do instead of just creating a, you know, a very expensive peripheral that might just have a select niche audience to it. I to me this makes total total sense. Now, the design not great. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the only problem here and there's like a few bu- befuddling things to the the design but like um you know, Ryan McCaffrey was just like he had a picture of it um and he's just like it looks like the DualShock 4 is about to take a poo. I'm like, now I can't unsee that. <laughs> now I think that's the dumbest design ever. But like, instead of having this big circle on the bottom, if we could have just thinned that down a bit, you know, if we could have yeah. had that screen to just be a little bit smaller, it's weird that it's OLED Rip Vita, but like, I, I, it's, yeah. it's, it's weird. I, I, I think they just kind of said OLED because Sony just likes that word a lot. <laughs> well, like Let's just make it OLED and I, charge an extra $10 for it. I don't know, man. Because, like, to me, I mean, OLED is not, like, the coolest feature in the world anymore. And it's probably because of battery life concerns. I, yeah. And that's the only concern I have for this. I mean, yeah, outside of TVs, it, it's no real. Yeah. Because the thing with OLED is is that's pure black. The, the pixels are just dunzos if there's no thing on screen here so to me it makes sense for battery uh reasons but like other than that i think this is a cool little you know attachment for if you want it and guess what dude when i use my elite controller or if i'm using the astros i'm literally only using two buttons i'm not Mm -hmm. using all four paddles it's just uncomfortable so to me this screams i'm getting this day one great yeah yeah, you know what? And, and, and don't judge me. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to judge you. You look at like all. you're judging. You always no, you're, judge. You, I mean, you play games like Apex and That's Fortnite. True. I feel like that would help you out big time to help you play on the right console. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Because when I'm cross playing on on like like a game like Call of Duty, I'm like, man, I do wish this. I was playing this on Xbox for the sole reason that that Elite controller is so freaking mm-hmm. good to me. And so, like, seeing this attachment, I'm like, all right, now I'm set. Now I never have to think about that. I can just play cross-play with my friends and have that advantage, which maybe is another reason as to why this is coming out in the, in the next sure. months after that. Because it does kind of seem like a little afterthought thing since mm-hmm. the PlayStation 5 is so close. But with that, we had a question uh, from Nathan. He wrote in asking if this attachment was signs of something more. Mm. Of signs of the future of the Dual Shock, Kyle, do yeah. you think the PlayStation Five controller, Dual Shock Five, we assume that's what it's called. There's mm. already people making a nice, beautiful little prototypes of the blueprint. Yeah. Do you think that blueprint's gonna uh, include back back uh, paddles or back buttons? Uh, it could be. It could be just that there might be a a. Um another uh skew of the dual shock five mm-hmm. if that is what they're going to call it which they should yeah um but yeah because i can unlike, see it unlike xbox we're good at naming things it's <laughs> like keep it simple keep it easy put a number in I, front of it we're good i i think what really screams uh dual shock five for this thing though is the ability to have a profile yeah attached to that back pa- paddle so that way like your controller well, just have your profile stuff on it. So when you press, because mm-hmm. uh, I don't know about you, Joe, I only turn on my PlayStation by my DualShock. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, hit the PS me. button and it turns on. So I actually just of found the... out, because my, my TV is a Sony. I don't know if this is all TVs. Uh-huh. But like I found out if I just put the input to, to channel one, which is like what I got here, or input one, um, yeah. it turns on my PlayStation. And it blows my mind. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Usually inconvenient, but like, <laughs> I got yeah. turned off. But like, I'm like, oh, that's dope. I, it, it'd be cool, like, you, you turn it on and then you don't have to go into that login page. Yeah. You're just logged in as that profile. Every Your settings are set. 
it's tied to your controller. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, to me, I think I, I think the profiles is a really awesome thing. Again, we talk about a hundred eighty dollar peripheral here. One of the big sellers was, hey, you can have three profiles on it. For this one, yeah, it's a huge killer thing for thirty bucks. You get the same exact thing. That that is the must have feature and a little bit more. I I like this a lot, dude. Like, yeah. I know a lot of people like to make fun of the design, but to me, it's really cool i really like it uh when it comes to the playstation 5 though i don't know if this i don't know if you put this in every consumer's hand that they're going to dig those buttons or they're going to dig those paddles and the only way that you can supplement that is by taking you know having it kind of like the the elite controller where it's magnets in the back but again i gotta think it's like we're we're putting in the in the hands of everybody Right, kids, grandma, grandpa. <laughs> yep, you know the same people that are buying an Xbox Series X, apparently. Uh-huh. And like, the I don't think buttons in the back of the controller is going to appeal to everyone. I think it does appeal to some people, just not everyone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and though it's a cool option, I feel like it is better if PlayStation, yeah, maybe the start of next generation, go hey. With the launch of the PlayStation 5, we are also launching the DualShock Elite, you know? Mm-hmm. Since Sony's really good at copying things, they'll just call yeah. it the Elite. No one's, I'm not going to care what name yeah. they, they fill up use in. And so, like, f- to me, that would be awesome so that I have, if I wanted to, a jumping off point to say, here's the basic DualShock. I mm-hmm. like you. You're cute. But here's this awesome thing that I can, that is, that is more practical yeah. for me. Yeah. Or like follow the branding they did with their headsets. Yeah, ha- have a have a silver, gold, platinum. Platinum would be like this elite DualShock, and have it so like uh, you know with with the accessory being the like the bronze triggers, and then like you get like yeah silver yeah. and gold. Yeah, that's that's cool. Or man. or even have like the bronze would have like no light bar, mm-hmm. and like the gold for light bar if you have a VR and you need it. Like oh, just no, like I'm different just iterations. Like like. like the attachment is like the bronze version. Oh, you know what I mean, oh, yeah. got it, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Yeah, and yeah. So like, I don't know, maybe just little things like that. I would prefer more than having buttons on the, on the standard controller. Sure, absolutely. That's just gonna drive the pro- the price up of of the standard yep. controller even more. And I don't think anybody wants that. Nope. You know, just give, please give us a better battery shoe, please, for the love of God. Yes. With that, Kyle, let's get into the next topic. Unless there's anything more you want to talk about this. No. No, I'm good. I'm I'm excited about the next one. Uh, This goober comes uh, over at The Verge by Chaim Gartenberg. I hope I said your name right. Uh, Godfall is the first game announced for the PlayStation 5. Gearbox and Counterplay Games have just announced Godfall at the Game Awards, a third-person fantasy looter slasher focused on melee combat. That marks the first game announced for Sony's upcoming PlayStation 5. Godfall is set in an entirely new universe and will support solo, duo, or three-player co-op although no gameplay was shown at the show. In the Gearbox Spirit, which also publishes the Borderlands games, Godfall will have an emphasis on collecting ever-escalating sets of loot and weapons over the game. It will be out holiday 2020, and will also be released on the Epic Games Store. So Nathan writes in. I asked for everybody for questions. I get it. It's the Christmas week. Nathan came in with the save. He wrote, I think Godfall looks rad. I thought it was interesting for a third party to be first to get the PlayStation 5 branding. It makes me think that it's going to be good as Sony is out there putting their stamp on it. Uh, yeah. Right there with you. Uh, the trailer wasn't like, it didn't blow me out of the way like, uh, you know, Hellblade did for sure. sure. The mm-hmm. thing that sold me afterwards was actually the gifts that they were putting yep. out. The animations looked insane. In, in, I was going to say intense and insane, but yeah. Kyle. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so I was in, after they showed the trailer, they had a couple of the developers come out, and they described it as a looter slasher. Yeah. And I was like, yes, please. Because everybody knows my love of Borderlands. I love me that style of game. Um, so to make it as a looter slasher, where you were wrecking fools and getting cool loot, mm-hmm. to make your warrior, or wh- whatever they call you, uh, look super badass, I'm all for that. Yeah. I feel like this is going to be super fun. Um, I'm not entirely um, knowledgeable about Counterplay Games. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I, else they this, have play, uh, made. Yeah, look that up because I do think it may to. be their first game. But this is also Gearbox Publishing, so shout out to Randy. 
Um, probably out of medieval times as you speak. He fucking loves those. Uh, so on their their site, it's just. I, I do believe it's their first game. Awesome. So yeah, for a first game, man, this looks really nice. It, it was giving yeah. me Kingdoms of uh, Amalur vibes. For well, yeah, that's what I thought it was actually in the trailer. Oh, really? I was like, oh, maybe this is a the, a new Kingdoms of Amalur thing. Yeah. Uh, um, to me, it's not weird that this is a third party game because I think no. Sony likes the pageantry of hey, we're this is our event. We're going to showcase the PlayStation Five and all its things. But here's this little tease at the Game Awards. And I really don't think they thought Xbox was going to come out and drop what they dropped. Yeah. Because it kind of overshadowed what, what Godfall was setting out to do. So And they, ha- they have a big team, too. Yeah? Uh, it's a 75-person team. Oh. And, and the team has worked on games as Ratchet and Clank, God of okay. War, okay. Destiny, Horizon Zero Dawn, Diablo 3, Gears 5. I know 5, all of those games. Titanfall 2, Star Wars Battlefront, Halo 5. Bioshock Infinite, Call of Duty, and Justice 2, Overwatch. They've got some talented people Other on this Halo team. Halo 5, those are all amazing games. <laughs> oh, like, I'm not even kidding. I, fucking, I don't like Halo 5. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I love a good Master Chief every now and again, right? Halo Reach, game of the game of the decade. But, like, man, Halo I'm, 5, I am right? I am very excited about this. Yeah. Well, I'm, this is now, I mean, we'll get into it when we talk about our most anticipated of next year. Oh, really? um, oh, you're putting this, that already? Like it, it might have already like inched its way in. It might have already oh, done really? that. Okay. So we'll, we'll we'll talk about that more when we get to that episode. Of course, of course. I think that's probably next week. But nonetheless, yeah, yeah Godfall looks rad. It's something I'm definitely down for. It was giving me. I thought I was. I was actually giving it more not Borderlands vibes, but more of like Destiny vibes. So it's actually going to be really cool when this game comes out when we're both playing it together. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's going to be so cute, dude. Yeah. Oh, we're going to have trouble in the game. I, I still need to help you get that Borderlands 3 plat, by the way. I don't even know if it's worth it. I don't even know. Oh, how dare Kyle. you. Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Hellblade looks cool. It does. Godfall it does look looks cool. cool. But let's talk about the game that I thought of you immediately when it was announced. Thank at you. The game show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Priestman over at IGN writes, The Wolf Among Us 2 completely restarted with new engine. While Wolf Among Us 2 is back in development, the renewed version of the game doesn't build on any of the previous work that Telltale did on it. The creative team working on the sequel now actually started from scratch. This is what Jamie Otterley, CEO of LCG Entertainment, who revived Telltale as a brand, told US Gamer when discussing how The Wolf Among Us 2's development got started. Quote, We have completely restarted the development of the game. Oddly said, we felt it best to give the new creative team a clean slate to start with, end quote. That means all previous details shown off in the trailer and other materials for The Wolf Among Us Season 2 will not be included in the renewed version of the sequel. In fact, Oddly also confirmed that the Telltale tool that Telltale's adventure games were made with isn't being used either. The Wolf Among Us 2 is being developed in Unreal Engine, probably for the best given how old the Telltale tool was getting. The Wolf Among Us 2 is being revived by several former Telltale employees who had previously worked on the game's first season. season. That includes lead writer Pierre Chorette and directors Nick Herman and Dennis Leonard, who are working alongside LCG Entertainment as Ad Hoc Studio, the company they founded after leaving Telltale. Further good news is that the voice actors of Big B Wolf and Snow White are returning alongside composers Jared Emerson Johnson. I don't know any of those words. I put that in for you. Are you Ooh, excited? So good. Where, where, I'm, where your hype? Where's your hype? I my hype's very high. Yeah. Uh, Wolf Among Us is one of my favorite games of the past decade. Um, just when I think of a cool game, Joe. Yeah. Like just that just oozes cool. I I really do think of this game. So okay, art, you, art style, music, all of it. So I know this is kind of like the cult classic of telltale that this game didn't do the greatest i mean none of it looks like out of the telltale stories none of them did particularly well but like this sure. was one that had a very dedicated fan base mm-hmm. what was it that made this appeal to you what is this game about why should i be excited yeah. why should i platinum so, this game kyle oh man i don't even have the platinum for it which what? is i well it's a telltale game you just watch it i uh, know this one you have to like interact with a couple things and i, I missed one or two um why she sh- okay so before even i played this i did yeah. not know about the source material the source material is based on a comic series called fables 
Okay. Um, and fables is basically what if you take all these fairy tale characters and bring them into like real life where they're down on their luck like there are fairy tale characters that are drug addicts Whoa. some are you know murderous fiends you have trolls and ogres who are like shapeshifters like you're in the to, story you tell me three little pigs have an incestual three-way type of gang <laughs> thing situation no i did not say that at all for the record I think um <laughs> But I, I, I'm, I, it's been a while since I played, but there is actually a car, a pig character who yeah. is like Big B's, one of Big B's friends, um, huh. and they talk about the, like this farm where all the fairy tale characters go when mm. they're like done, like like it's kind of like um, uh, like a, a like maximum security almost in a way or like a what retirement do do actually done? what do, what do you For, mean when they're done like their fairy like their tail is over like they get banished from living in this See? in this world yeah uh it's from like my... noir like detective vibes absolutely absolutely so oh. the, the the main story goes there is a uh a murder a murderer on the loose who's it's killing surprising. fairy tale characters they're going after the precious princesses okay um and Big B is trying to figure out who's doing it. And you run into characters like Bluebeard. Uh, you got um, uh, Snow White, obviously, is a major character. You got... Is, uh, she, the, is she the dame that gets kidnapped, is she? I'm not going to say anything. Oh. Um, Ariel. Um, yeah, it's just like... It's, a good it's game, really good. Man. It's really it's good. Really good. Okay. I might have I might have screwed up a couple characters there, because yeah. it has been a couple years, but... I love, I just love this game. People awesome. need to play this game. Awesome. Yeah. People, go out there and play this game. And Kyle, go out there and platinum it. You love this game so much. I'm going to. Now I have to. Yeah. I've been called out. But like, okay, but <laughs> here's the thing. Is it one of those things where you have to start the whole chapter over in order to get to get? No, I think you can do it if you know what you're looking for. Okay. In one playthrough, I'm pretty sure. Or I think there's chapter select. Okay. You can get it that way. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm excited for you. I'm not going to lie. This got me interested into checking out The Wolf Among Us Season 1. Please do. That's for sure. And now Please after do. you telling me, I'm I'm on board. So yeah. with that, Kyle, let's go on to the next story. Uh, PS Lifestyle, Brianna Reeves, once again, writes in with Horizon Zero Dawn and Uncharted The Lost Legacy headline PS Now's January 2020 lineup. With 2019 quickly coming to a close, Sony is unleashing details about what January 2020 holds for the growing PlayStation Now lineup. Once January 2nd arrives, PS Now subscribers will be able to get their hands on three new additions to the service. Horizon Zero Dawn, Overcooked 2, and Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Each of the th- each of the three... Oh, boy. Each yes. of the three... Oh, there's three twice. That's why it's screwing uh, me up. Brianna, what are you doing to our boy here? <laughs> uh, each of the three will be available to stream via the service for a limited period of time. I forgive her. She's my best friend. That's true. Horizon Zero Dawn and Uncharted The Lost Legacy are only slated to appear in the PS Now lineup until April 7th, 2020. During that time, subscribers can choose whether to stream or download both adventures, though the, though the download option is only accessible to PS4 owners. With Horizon Zero Dawn, Play- PlayStation Now subscribers will have access to all of the celebrated action RPGs content. Said content includes the original experience, the Frozen Wilds DLC, as well as all of the in-game extras. Mm. Similarly, Uncharted The Lost Legacy's edition of PlayStation Now brings with it Uncharted 4 Thief's End multiplayer suite and survival modes. These few games add to the more than 800 PS4, PS3, and PS2 games that are already available to stream. Just last month, the likes of PUBG, F1 2019, and Wolfenstein the Old Blood were welcomed on Sony's streaming platform. Awesome. Awesome as we see the lineup getting bigger and better. It just kind of sucks how they're only here for like a few months and then just kind of gone. Yeah. Right? I, I really do feel like this is where PlayStation Now needs to get better in this category. Uh, is First party games should be there permanently. They should just be something you straight up get there permanently. If this was a permanent added thing, I'm not expecting Overcooked 2, of course. That's going to go just like how it would on on Game Pass. But like Horizon Zero Dawn, it's been out long enough, Sony. I think you could put that out on the PlayStation Now uh, you know, platform and have people go to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Same with Lost mm-hmm. Legacy. 
which honestly you should go out there and play it's it's a fantastic game so for me um i like to see that it's it's building a catalog and i and i like how they're being transparent as to saying how long it's going to be there for uh you don't get that on game pass if i'm not mistaken but it it, it is kind of like a double-edged sword where it's like yeah most of these games are exclusive but I don't know, like, these should just be here forever. Right? I agree. Yeah. 100% as a, as a way of, like, hey, play our best games here. Like, the games you can only find here, it's on this service, mm-hmm. play it anywhere type thing. Yeah. Um, f- first of all, you should 100% play both of these games. 100% Horizon is one of my favorite games of all time, mm-hmm. uh, along with Joe, for sure. And Uncharted Lost Legacy, I think, doesn't get the credit it deserves. Yeah. Um, a fantastic entry in the Uncharted series. And some people forget that that was the DLC 4-4. Yeah. And that DLC is so huge, it got its own physical release. because it, And it's like a, I don't know, 9, 10 hours? Like, it's a huge standalone game mm-hmm. uh, that follows Chloe and uh, Nadine. Yeah. Um, yeah, go check out PS Now. I think Please. the trials are, are very... Uh, affordable and reasonable yeah. and um go just go check it out please how, how dare you if you don't i really do think uh playstation now is going to get a renovation when playstation 5 hits absolutely i mean we are seeing playstation promote this more and more mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh but i i i really feel like it's still not it it, it has potential it just yeah. still doesn't match game pass and, I, and we need to get it there so and this this is kind of goes along with the uh the rumors I talked with you about two mm-hmm. weeks ago now about Horizon Zero Dawn getting PC port. Yeah. You can it's... now play Horizon on your PC using PS Now. Yeah. And I and I mean, we're hearing more and more of those rumors are coming. It's it's happening. Yeah. It's just Sony needs to announce when. It's it's at this point sure. everybody knows it's just a matter of when. And again, I, I really think it's a it's a good idea to get uh, an audience that doesn't care about your content on board and get them excited for your suite of games and for your platform in general to get them on you know you know those eyes on it like for me to see if we if we look on back here at um, at Godfall seeing that it's a PC and PlayStation 5 sure. mm-hmm. does that mean it's console exclusive we'll, we'll probably figure out but like to me I think that's what the the, the word exclusive is going to change it's going to mean exclusive to that console more than yeah. or you know or platform rather than that console right yeah instead of just exclusive be console only or console exclusive yeah. the word console will be heavily featured for sure i think i think we've gotten we, we've gotten them to do an, or they've done enough number crunching back in 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 the background that they've seen that it's not going to hurt them bo- their bottom line. And yeah, to see this being introduced as something you could play on your PC stre- like streamable wise, it's awesome. So let's get them inputs in there. Let's I would love to see how a game like Horizon Zero Dawn plays on a mouse and keyboard. Let's do it, dude. I'm hyped. But with that, Kyle, let's talk about the game that really caught my eye at Hell the yeah. Game Awards. Let's do it. Sammy Barker from Push Square writes, Ghost of Tsushima's stunning PS4 open world will focus on player freedom. The beauty of a big sandbox is that you can travel in many different directions, but open world games tend not to take advantage of their settings, forcing you to follow a point on a compass. Ghost of Tsushima, the upcoming PlayStation 4 Samurai exclusive from Seattle-based developer Sucker Punch, will diminish the importance of the staple system, giving you the freedom to discover its world. We really want you to have that choice of, hey, that cool bamboo forest over there, I really want to check it out. I want to head in that direction and see what it is, art director Jason Connell said. There's no waypoint. There's nothing that says go here and look at this bamboo forest. It's unclear from the quote whether the title will remove waypoints entirely, but it definitely sounds like the developer wants to give you the freedom to go off the beaten path. So we saw this little teaser at the state of play they said be here at the game awards and then hellblade shot sh- uh, you know uh, casting a shadow over it that's all they were talking about to me i was watching this trailer on repeat i want to know what you thought of this trailer for me i thought it was fantastic it was giving mm-hmm. me assassin's creed odyssey vibes 
one hundred percent. That was the same vibe I got from it. Uh, yeah. A little bit Uncharted as well. Oh, how so? Um, uh, well, I was. I always wondered what it would be like if it was just strictly staying on a road path or on the horse yeah. and not really traversing areas. But I saw parts of that trailer where they're hanging on the leads and shimming along the leads. Oh, the ghost is okay. type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I'm all about. Like I, I want big action set pieces. I want to find hidden areas in this uh, feudal Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, Does it get you nervous though that there's going to be it, what it seems to be a no waypoint system? Like how the hell am I gonna know? Oh, where to go? that makes me nervous. Yeah, uh, that is, and that's one of my biggest criticism of the time I did have with Breath of the Wild. I didn't like it just dropped me off and said, "Hey, go." Yeah. Um, I do want a little bit of handholdiness, like hey, go this way. This or, like, is still some a video nudges. game after all, right? You want to be guided yeah. through your experience this way. I will absolutely go back and experience other parts of that area, but mm-hmm. just tell me the the right place to go, and then from there I will branch out. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, it does it, it does get me a little nervous to see that there's no possibly no waypoints in this game, but it maybe also says it's, it's maybe lends to the idea of maybe this isn't as big of an open world as we think, and maybe as we're going from you know town to town or forest to forest like Bamboo Forest here, that we are going to get a snippet of story in each location. And that seems really interesting to me if they go in, in sort of that direction where you're just on your, on your horse, you know, roach and you're just, you enter a town and just story just happens for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more like a dynamic rather than here's a list and here's all these side quests that are going to blow your mind that you're not, that you're not going to know which way is up. You're going to have 50 of them and you're going to get lost and you just kind of want to beeline it to, to find the end. Maybe it gives you a little bit of leeway of going, Hey, go to this bamboo forest, check it out. And something just happens to me. That's what that, you know, that's what like samurai, you know, films and, 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 you know, spaghetti westerns did so well was just give you this sense of adventure where every turn every episode every movie kind of felt like a a a long journey you know so i i really dig it it was there anything else from the trailer that you saw that it that kind of spoke to you as a gamer because for Mm. me i loved the ghost's look oh yeah, God, he v- looks so visually, cool. yeah, this game is breathtaking. Mm-hmm. You're um, breathtaking. You're breathtaking. No. Um, <laughs> I mean, I just I loved the kind of. I wonder if those are like upgradable finishers. Yeah, like when it comes to combat, when you just like the one stab through, or like, is there a meter to be built up? There's a lot that I want to know of, as far as like how the combat works. Yeah. I want to know, like, the UI. What is that going to look like? Or is it just no UI whatsoever? That would be I'd really be cool. totally okay with no yeah. UI whatsoever. Dude, have, yeah, just like, just press X. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's your slash. And just, you know what a parry is. Don't be an idiot. Like, yeah. <laughs> have it like that. That'd be cool because. Ha- have a non, like, little bar to tell me what my health is. Yeah, or your stamina. Like, something whatever, physical. Right? Yeah, something yeah. physical on the ghost that shows me, like, what my health would be. Yeah, kind of like in Dead Space, how it showed you on the suit. If, mm-hmm. if you're Absolutely. Health. Yep, that's actually pretty cool. I would be super down for that. Um, for me, you know, Sean Capri is a real piece of shit guy. Right, let me just say that first and foremost, because he was just like, I don't like how the trees are blowing back and forth. Oh, thumbing his Canadian nose at us, right? Um, I loved it. I, I thought every animation looked beautiful. I thought the yeah. leaves, I thought the forest looked beautiful, and I'm like, mm-hmm. how do you want, how do you want trees trees to move? Like, you want this to be hurricane force winds? I don't get it. Yeah. Like, but like to me, the scenery was just beautiful and when he's riding through like the wheat fields and oh, just yeah. seeing just the again like the wheat and just hit your horse and mm-hmm, just like mm-hmm. it looked just stunning yeah and though we got like a glimpse of the future that is you know the next box with hellblade to me what struck me here is just the power of this console alone yeah what it has 
still left in it. I mean, we saw Last of Us, it looks beautiful. It's coming out May, let's go. But, like, seeing this game as well, it looks so stunning. Yeah. And I yeah. want to know how, how, not long this story is, but how big this world is. What they're going sure. to do different in open worlds. Because I forget there was an interview that just happened. I forget where and who said this, but they're mm-hmm. just like, worlds don't need to get bigger. Open world games need to get smarter. Yes. And that's what I really feel like with this game. It's kind of, again, if they go in that route of what I was I was, I was was feeling in my head that it's going for it, uh, or that this game's going for, I think that's a really terrific way. And just to see, like, the different abilities that you get to have, like that s- surprise stun grenade, that was yeah. so freaking cool. It was awesome. It looked so dope. That's the power of PlayStation's gem. I also want to shout game. out uh, the cover art is gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, the box of the ghost in the sea of the red flowers and mm-hmm. wheat. Oh, mwah. chef's kiss. I know, dude. It looks so um, beautiful. Also, like, at the end of this trailer, which trailer's beautiful. Uh-huh. I hate it. Uh, the e- E3 exe- exe- execs. Oh, my God. I can't speak all of a sudden. Yeah, um, anybody who does a press conference or who's running the show... Stop moving the camera away from the demo. Oh my god! Can right? you please? I understand you have the gimmick of like the oh. leaves falling, whatever. But I want to see the trailer. Gimmick. Yes, I'm here to see the trailer. Give me the trailer. Don't give me yeah the cherry yeah. Bo- blossom shit. Like and yeah, the it was it was cool knowing that the orchestra was there and playing along with it. Yes, but give but me the visuals it. It of the game. Up. Exactly. I yes, want to I, see the game full screen. I, I definitely understand. Um, but uh, it ended s- August yeah. 2020. Or not August. Summer, summer 2020. 2020. Do you think it's going to be August? Because it's that, is, th- that is what I do feel. August. Yeah. Uh, or, again, that September slot that Spider-Man was. Um, God, no. See, I think, it, I think it'd be smart if they did, like, end of August, kind of like Control... And have this be the start of the holiday season, like as it's about to hit s- September, because mm-hmm. you don't want it to be lost in the conversation that is next gen, but mm-hmm. you also don't want it to be lost in the conversation that is Cyberpunk, Last of Us, and um, sure, Avengers, right? So I think I think August or July would be a good <laughs> place for this game. It's it's a very tricky place to be in, but. Really, I, I think I'm leaning more on end of August. Yeah. More At this ever. point, just show me a steelbook and collector's edition, and let's call it a I'll day. I'll buy it. Yeah. Yep. Let's <laughs> just, just do, do it. it, dude. Now, <laughs> oh my god, I was gonna say, do you, you don't think of, like a limited edition PS4, right? Oh, I bet that late in the game. No, um, no. Probably not. I, I have another question for you. Do you think yeah. Last of Us is gonna have it? I do. Yeah, and I think that that's the reason why I say Ghost will not because I feel why well, have nice. two limited edition consoles that close to each other. That's right. One uh, of them I think will have it. I lean towards Last of Us. Yeah, definitely. And I buy that limited edition like a <laughs> freaking idiot. <laughs> oh, know? Can, can I tell you a real quick, like very scared story I no, had while I was what? Okay, no, whatever. Oh, fine. Next, <laughs> next segment. <laughs> um, I was playing NBA. Yeah. On my PS4 Pro. And I paused Ballin, the game. As the kids say, I, I, I paused it, and I because I, I got a Kobe. text or something uh-huh. that and you I probably my... didn't reply to, Kyle. You We're text me when I'm at work. Got, I yeah, can't. It. <laughs> ah, um, but I was in a pause menu. The game uh-huh. was just you know running in the background at that point, and I had my first jet engine sound from my PS4. It oh. got super super loud. Wow! Like, hold on a second. NBA is not a graphical game. Yeah. Or, like, heavy, like, God of War was. It didn't do it for that. So I'm in a pause menu, and it sounds like it's taken off. That was weird. I got very, very scared. I feel nothing when it comes to, like, when people complain about the jet lag of the PlayStation 4. I bet it's there. I bet it is Jet lag? Yeah. I, I, well, <laughs> shut, just don't become tired. Adam Leonard. Don't Listen, become you, Adam Leonard. Right? You're going to yell at me because I don't answer texts while I'm at work? I'm going to call you out uh, on jet lag. You know what? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you deserve that cough. I, don't, no, don't edit it out, Kyle. Don't edit it out. Uh, anyway. Too bad. This is how we have fights. Uh, don't worry. Mommy's okay. Uh, for me, I've never heard like the... Well, I've heard it. 
but I play games with head- headphones on all the time, mm. so I don't hear that jet noise at all. Mm. So to me, I I understand the complaint. I'm just like, wear headphones, you you simpletons. <laughs> They when you have the Steel Series Arctis, you know Arctis uh, Sevens. It's you live in a premium life, you know. Well, you I'd rather use use that hundred bucks towards a game, right, or just start a successful podcast. And then let me know it. when that happens. <laughs> How dare you, sir? Whoa! We will need a new co-host. We will. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good hit. That was a real good hit. You know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, Kyle, you know what, dude? Are you holding on to something? No, I hope you're not. Uh, Prepare the drop each and every week. PlayStation drops the latest and greatest games on the PlayStation Store for the only problem (coughs) is that there are way too many awesome games to name. So, Kyle and Joseph each pick one game from their choosing. This week of December 17. 2019, Joseph is buying time because he forgot to put it in the show notes. His game is Drumroll. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. 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 for it. It's what happening. A, what a choice. Um, soccer, pinball, what the <laughs> hell is this? Exactly. Treasure Rangers, what? Oh, here it is. Untitled Goose Game. Maybe you've heard about Untitled Goose Game already. But in case you haven't, we'll catch you up. It's a lovely morning in a village, and you are a horrible goose. That's pretty much it. (laughs) What a description! Oh my goodness. I love how they're like, you probably heard about it. (laughs) It's it's a village. You're you're an awful goose. Mm -hmm. What more do you need in life? I bought this uh, yesterday. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I bought it. Um, there's a dynamic <laughs> theme out, which apparently I, I got it. And I haven't seen it yet. But apparently the dynamic theme on PlayStation, uh, on the PlayStation 4, is the goose will pop up and start just blocking the the icons. Oh, really? Yeah, being a real dick. So, That's um, pretty awesome. I feel like this story speaks to me. This game, rather, speaks to me and just being a dickhead goose. Nice. Yeah. What was your pick uh, here, Kyle? So, I was... I did look at this before the show. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, not a strong week, and I Dude. understand why. Uh, and I was looking on YouTube for the trailers for each game, yeah. right? And I want to say at least four of them are all from the same distributor. Really? Um, Dig- Digger- Digerati? Um, so this game... Uh, let me see. It's like the Iro Hero is one. It's like a shmup. Yeah. Uh, I think re- not Regions of Ruin. Um, Stra- Stra- Stramium Immortality, Tamashi. Like, they're all from the same company. I thought it was funny that they all put them out the same week. Here's so, the thing. Uh, my I'm going to be real. Week, I'm going to be real. Uh, I'm letting Bad yeah. Bit out of the cage here for a sec. These all look yeah. like shit. <laughs> No, that uh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. My case this week, Untitled Goose Game is a great pick. That would be the one saving grace, but since you already took that one, I'm going to say, go play a game in your backlog this week. Oh, yeah, that bad? They're, they're, I, I, I don't want to spend any money on any You don't want to spend any money offerings. on Wadham? It's the same people behind Katamari Damashi or something. But that's the thing. Like I didn't play Katamari. That, those games are trippy as fuck. Um, it, it looks cute and all, but I don't know. Nope, not for me. It could. I honestly, Joe, I feel like this oh could be a God. PS Plus game in the future. Honestly, Kyle, you don't so. want to play Word Maze by Pauji? No, I don't. Are you sure it's cross by on Vita? You tell uh, me. There's it a couple out here on Vita. Uh, yeah, no, I'm good. Or Soccer Pinball? Nope. You don't want to play Xeno Raptor? Nope. Not even. And Dreams VR Bundle? I don't even know what this is. What? Wait, Dreams VR Bundle? No. N dreams. What? VR. Yeah, the letter N and then dreams. Wow. It says four incredible VR titles at one low price. Shooty Fruity, The Assembly, Perfect, and Bloody Zombies. Defend your store from mutant fruit. Discover a morally challenging organization from uh, contrasting perspectives. Slip away to beautiful and relaxing locations. Or fight the undead plague in hand-to-hand combat. What a generic-ass VR title. 
Wow, get him, Kyle. You know, we're we're a couple of freaks out of the leash, you know what I mean? We're just not giving a flip. Dang. Also, Ready Set Heroes adds survival mode in new multiplayer options. Oh. Dude, I'm you know, here's the thing. Go play Ready Set Heroes. Cause it genuinely looks adorable. Yeah, and um, that's a good call. Genuinely looks fun. So go go ahead and play that game. I think yep. I might even pick it up as well because it looks cute AF. I've been I've been in this rut, Kyle, where I just honest to God don't know what to play. Like I'm thinking I'm debating of trying to get it back into The Witcher Three or Sekiro. So mm-hmm. you got to decide this. What am I playing? Sekiro. Son of a bitch. I kind of want to play Witcher. Then go play Witcher, man. What are you... But I kind of wanted to play Sekiro, though. Kyle, that's it. We got no Andy's House's snail mail because it's the Christmas <coughs> season. Everybody's trying to bring Christmas cheer. And, I mean, next week, you know, he's going to have a lot of presents. So I want him to, you know, have, like, a sense of security before I just straight up rob this fool. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So with that, that's been the trophy room this week. It's a nice short little week. I like it, Kyle. Yeah. I like it. You know, Ooh, we talked right. about the game awards. Talked about new peripheral. Yeah, things are nice little present good. under your tree or yeah. your your menorah it, or whatever or the, <coughs> the Kwanzaa one. I Do don't it know. up. Yeah, I don't know what that what that one's called. What other organized religion? We forgot. Go for it, gang. Um, hey, Kyle. Listen. Hey, before Joe. we go. Yeah. We always pimp out what we what what we're what we're doing so kyle yeah. what would you like to pimp out this week as always myself um also a shout out to that uh that tweet you sent out a couple weeks ago name awesome. something you would say uh during sex and oh, yeah. something that said during trevor room yeah that would be my thing i like to plug myself <laughs> um who that ninja 73 on twitter and on psn my show all about the kind of funny community best friends talk funny at bfs talk funny and uh, I want you to go spend some time with some family and friends. <laughs> as oh, I cough and die. As he I dies. Made it. I was doing that so. That one was gross, too. I was doing so well this episode. You know what? So well. Don't and worry, I lost that it one, during that the That one you're going to have to edit out. That one was legit. Like, I'm not gross. going to edit it out. I'm Calm just saying. Down. I'm just saying. There's emphasis on that one. Hey, gang, you can, if you like what you heard here this week, which is crazy because this is actually the last new show of the, <laughs> of the year. Um, we're going to be recording the game of the year. We're going to be recording games of the decades. <clears throat> the, the games that defined PlayStation over the decades next week. It's going to be a hell of a, of a next two weeks, so stay tuned for that. And if you like what you heard and you want to hear more, please, please, please rate us five stars on iTunes. We are one away from 50, and if you give us a five-star review on iTunes, I will give away my love and appreciation to you. Thank you so much. And you know what we're going to start doing, too? New Year's resolution. Every time we get a five-star review on iTunes, I'm going to read it out on the show. Bam. That's a great resolution. I like that one. That's a good resolution. I'm going to do that. So please, 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 if you could, five-star review helps us out. And yeah, we're on Spotify, SoundCloud, or actually not SoundCloud, uh, Google Play, all that stuff. Anywhere there's an RS feed that doesn't uh, start with SoundCloud, we're on it. So with all that said, and with all that out of the way, everybody, keep your wits about you, and keep hunting, and keep playing PlayStation.